Hi, everybody. I'm Robbie Floyd alongside Davey Coombs in the 125cc East Coast Challenge. It has all been James Bubba Stewart. Five races and five wins on the year. He's already won the championship. Yeah, he sure has. When Bubba started this season out, his stated goal was to win every race, and he was five for five. In fact, he even clinched the 125 East Championship last week. But today, the perfect season looks like it came undone. Here's what happened. In practice, Bubba was going through the whoops. He got up on the front wheel. He tried as hard as he could to save it. He rode it out for about 30 feet. And finally, he went over the bars. He hit the ground hard. It looked a lot like his crash last year in Las Vegas. Only this time, he didn't have a broken collarbone. Doc Bodner had to look at him. He brushed off. He got back on the bike, went out, didn't go more than a half a lap, and he ran up the back of Ryan Mills. This time, he goes down again even harder. They had to take him out to the Asterisk Mobile Medics Unit. He's got a concussion. And, Robbie, I don't know if he's going to run. Well, let's hear from him himself. He's down with Jamie Little. Certainly a disappointing night for James. Very tough decision, a very emotional decision for you not to race. James, what was the final straw that made you decide this? My health, you know, um, I, I had a couple, you know, accidents, and, um, you know, I crashed twice today in practice, and, you know, the doctor told me if I, I cased anything or hit anything wrong, it actually could be fatal. So, you know, I want to be out here for these fans, you know, one <laughs> more than one time. So, you know, I'll be back next week, and, you know, it's really hard for me to be right here now, I'm telling you. And it's a concussion and two sore shoulders. Yeah, actually, I thought I dislocated my shoulder earlier, and, um, you know, I, I don't want to end up. I want to keep racing outdoors, and I want to be racing, so, you know, I'll be back next week and, you know, next year and be on 250, so hopefully I can hold one of these up again. All right, ends it with a smile. Get well. Best wishes to him, and congratulations, our 125 champion with two races to go. Well, unfortunate news from Bubba, but the 125cc class will have a brand new winner. I'm not talking about just this year. I'm talking about ever. They've yeah. never won. That's right. We went down, looked through the entry list. Not one guy in the race here at Indianapolis has ever won a first-place trophy in Supercross. So whether it's Brock Hepler, Davey Millsaps, even Kelly and Danny Smith, Steve Lampson, the veteran, has never won a Supercross before. Someone's going to make history and get in the record books tonight. Well, we talked about that road to the Vegas, the final stop on the AMA Supercross series. Boy, it's going to be a good one. The 125 CC East Coast results. It has Bubba out on top. Look at that. A perfect season until today. But look at that battle behind him. Yeah, you see Hepler. You see the two Smiths coming up. Ryan Mills has been Ryan good ever since he got over his little problem in Atlanta. But the funny thing is, Josh Hansen is not in the standings because he ride in the 125 West to start the season out. So as a result, he doesn't count the points. But if he did, Yamaha of choice, Josh Hansen, you can see it right there, would be our second place rider. A lot of different riders in the mix. Now it's time for our MX Unleashed track experience. For this week's MX Unleashed Track Experience, we hitch a ride with Steve Boniface, the Moto Racing.com team. A real short start into a left-hander, then you have a long straightaway to kind of sort them out. You make a hairpin, and now you're getting into the bulk of the track. The first big whoop section, you don't want to skim through here. You want to jump through, just like Steve's doing. Come down, you get on the inside, you got an off-camera corner here, and then we have the first big triple of the track. Going to be kind of weird early in the race, because there's going to be a lot of traffic. Then you step on, step off, get through this straightaway, another left-hander, another little rhythm section watch out for that guy in front of you a left hand a corner and then you have the biggest trip on the track but really not giving a lot of guys some of the problems then you go into a bank corner and then check these loops out these are gnarly a lot of the guys have taken it jumping through instead of skimming although most of the top 250 guys will be doing the down low skim then you come through another rhythm section then be careful right here of this last little kicker back across the start finish area make a bank corner and then there's your finish line and that's it for this week's mx unleashed track experience all right you see the track it's the 125 cc heat race number one 20 riders six lap and let's take a look at that door starting grid you see Brock Kepler is going to be in this race. He's second the points. Kelly Smith, Ryan Mills, the rider that James Stewart tangled with is out there. Steve Lampson, Brett Metcalf, Brad Ripple, one of the up-and-coming privateers. A good field for this first 125 heat. Also point out Justin Brayton, some of the arena cross talent making these last stops on the Supercross series. It should be a good one. And as we mentioned, a first-time winner. It's going to happen here tonight. I know. And looking now through the results, I forgot. Derek Shea Bentley's back out there. He could be the one. Oh, that's right. You called that one out. Here we go. 125. Heat number one. It's guys, number one. It's going to be Kelly Smith come up the inside. The whole shot master. Yamaha Troy's got Brock Kepler right behind him. Boniface looks like he's in third. And that's Steve Lampson. Or rather, take that back. Turbo Reef off to a good start in third. 
A six-lap race, ladies and gentlemen, a tight field. Oh, already riders going down in the back. But it's Mr. Smith out in front, and you want to talk about a rhythm section track. There are several rhythm sections here. Yeah, and you can see how they can mix it up right there. Hepler trying to go on the inside on the RMZ 250 up over the triple. Smith takes a look back. You know, he's a veteran out there, but yet he's never won a race. And again, we'll reiterate, we didn't see Derek Shea Bentley out there. He has won a few races in his career. He's back from an illness, and it's good to have Bentley back out there. And a 125 West Coast champion from a couple of years ago. Look at this. You want to talk about multiple lines. Swapping behind Brock Hepler, trying to get by, and the Suzuki's going to be set up to the inside. Oh, he went to the outside right there. It looked like he had him set up. But again, this is six laps. The top nine will qualify, so it doesn't necessarily have to pass him. And this is the kind of trouble that Hepler got himself in in Daytona. He was pushing too hard. He ended up not qualifying. He doesn't want that, that happen again. He pulls up inside this time, knocking on the door, and he goes down. Brock Hepler just runs it in probably when he shouldn't. He picks it up. He's still in the top nine. But, boy, a mistake right there from the rookie. Exactly. And as I said, that's happened to him before. It happens a lot to these kids because they're not used to qualifying at places like Loretta Lynn's or just local racetracks. But, uh, yeah, it was a good move. He could have been a little more aggressive, but he wasn't. Yeah, I, I honestly think he could have taken Kelly Smith out had he wanted to. Boy, talk about a rough, tough track. And you've got to look around with so many lanes. You'll see riders, as we're taking on board with Mr. Boniface, you'll see riders looking over because there are multiple lines. It's something you want as a racer to pass, but also places to be passed. Sure, you know, but a very technical track here. The Dirtworks guys laid down something pretty special here at the RCA to short lap times because the riders, you know, they've got this ability now to jump just about everything, even the guys in the 125 class, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. With James Stewart on the sidelines, all of these guys got to be thinking, hey, I finally got a shot. Kelly Smith out in front. There's a the man who was carrying the onboard camera, Steve Boniface, right at number 42. He's in second spot ahead of Turbo Reef. Johnson, Hepler, Ripple, Ripple, Smith, Metcalf, and in the ninth spot, Steve Lampson. Now, Lampson didn't get a very good start. And uh, right there you saw, looked like Hepler trying to get up and take a spot away from Jeff Gibson. So he's back in the top five. Actually, he's up to fourth, but he's got a long way to go. He's going to catch our leader, Kelly Smith. Let's take a look at what happened to Brock Hepler. He was set up to the inside, but this is definitely a rookie mistake. David. Yeah, he had it perfect. He actually jumped a little high there, but check it out. He comes down the inside, gets off these jumps a little quicker than Kelly. Kelly comes to the inside, kind of shuts the door. Right there, Hepler could have leaned into him. Instead, he went down on his own. You know, he, he was just trying to ride safe, I think. He could have been a lot worse than that. Brock Hepler in the fourth spot. Turbo Reef in third. Boniface and Smith. We'll be back with more 125cc heat racing action after this. Supercross on ESPN2 is brought to you by Suzuki, maker of performance-driven motorcycles, scooters, and all-terrain vehicles. By THQ's MX Unleashed, coming February 2004 for PlayStation 2 and Xbox. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, personal watercraft, and scooters. Welcome back to the RCA Dome. It's number 33 out in front. Kelly Smith out of Michigan on the Boost Mobile Yamaha of Troy. Everybody else is playing catch-up. You see Steve Boniface. He's got our onboard camera. He's running second right now. And if he had a camera that pointed behind him, you might get a good look at Brock Hepler, who's gone from sixth back up to third after that early fall where he's challenging for the lead. Steve Boniface right there keeping it down low through those whoops. Earlier we saw him skipping through them, but now he's trying to keep it down and go a little faster. Boniface actually ran a little bit quicker time, a 47.72, his lap time a lap ago. Kelly Smith is slowing down just a little bit. Now, does he ride conservative? He's out in front. Uh, Hepler's definitely not doing that. He's closed in. He's a little over four seconds behind. Yeah, we're on the white flag, and, and right now he's got Boniface sneaking up on him. And as tight as this start is here in Indianapolis, I think that you want that number one pick on the starting gate. So, yeah, Kelly wants to hold on to this. And plus, any win's a good win. You get to get on the podium and thank your mom and dad. Oh, look at the onboard camera pulling some great shots right here. I think we're going to see a pass. I just have that feeling. This is the trap. I think he's right out of time, Robbie. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> don't count him out. 
This rhythm section right here, Smith's got a slightly better line. He triples out of it, although that time he didn't. But I think right there was his last chance. He's run out of time. We talked about it, a tough track, and yeah, throwing it around. Kelly Smith at Ludington, Michigan on the Boost Mobile Yamaha Troy, able to take the win, but Steve Boniface, very impressive in the number two spot, right at number 42 on that MotoWorldRacing.com Suzuki. As we take a look at our 125cc Heat 1 results, it's Kelly Smith, Steve Boniface, Brock Hepler, Turbo Reef, and Kevin Johnson, your top five. Ryan Mills, not gonna qualify. Now down to Jamie. And Kelly Smith prevails. He's got two Suzuki riders all over him that whole race, but Brock Kepler was the first one. He came up there charged, and he ended up going down. What happened? Um, you know, I, I heard him over this uh, triple right here in front of us, and uh, he was kind of over revving a little bit. And, uh, you know, I don't know if he was a little off control or what happened, but he came in and bumped me a little bit. And uh, I don't know if he tipped over or what happened, but, you know, it gave me a little breathing room. And so then I uh, just kind of took it easy and rode my own race for the rest of that heat. And then Boniface gave us some nice shots. You know, he had the helmet cam. He was shooting you. He was all over you. No, that's, uh, I guess, you know, good for you guys. <laughs> um, I would have liked to pull away a little more, I think. But, uh, you know, Yamaha Troy and uh, Yamaha Boost Mobile, Dunlop, everybody's uh, doing a great job, and uh, that's why I'm up here. All right, Robin, take it away. Let's take a look at our Thor starting grid, the 125cc heat race number two. There is not going to be James Stewart in this. No, James Stewart said he wanted to make a statement for other riders who might have a head injury or a concussion, so he's decided, even though he might be able to ride, not to ride. Of course, he'd already clinched the championship, so keep an eye on Davey Millsaps. He's my new dark horse for this race, number 188. As you can see, uh, obviously our cameraman thinks the same. <laughs> Let's talk about Davey Millsaps. Since Bubba, he's the next big thing. He's been labeled the next Bubba. That's a lot of weight on your shoulders. We talked about it before. Oh, certainly it is, and there's so many things that they do alike, you know, where they're from, the way they ride, the way they dominate as amateurs, but to tell you the truth, Bobby, I I think he looks a lot like Travis Pastrana on a motorcycle. In fact, it's 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 almost eerie. Also, keep an eye on this guy right here, Josh Hansen. Never won a main event. He's been on the podium a lot of times here in the East, but again, doesn't count in the points, so he's got nothing to lose. A West Coast rider riding the East Coast, and he is coming to his own. Let's take a look at Josh Hansen. Guard goes sideways. Hansen has been a great starter all season long. There, it's it's Danny Smith instead. Danny Smith almost pushes his teammate up over the bales. Davey Millsaps off to a good start. Second, you see Paul Carpenter come on the inside as well. Watch Millsaps down the inside here. And Smith holds him off. He may be a rookie, but a smart move right there. He had the door shut. And what is it with Smith? And Kelly won the first heat race. Now it's Danny out in front of the second one, but Mr. Millsap started to close it. Let's see if he paid attention what happened with Brock Hepler and see if he just bides his time. Yeah, totally different riding style between Millsaps and Hepler. And when, what else? Millsaps is riding an RM125 two-stroke, and you can see, as we saw, wow, look at Hansen go through the whoops right there. As you saw earlier, Hepler's mounted on a four-stroke, so the different in that regard. And right now, look at that, a four-way battle. Wow, on the inside, Millsaps, nice move. But Hansen's going to take it right back on the inside, side by side. Hansen on the outside is going to try and check again and keep it on Paul Carpenter. Slingshot side by side. They keep going at it. Danny Smith's out in front. And look at this battle for a second. Davey Millsap on the yellow Suzuki. Josh Hansen on the blue Yamaha. And here comes Paul Carpenter. The Chevy trucks Kawasaki in fourth. And he's been fast of late. He sure has. Keep an eye on Hansen when they get back around and he's loose if he's still behind. Millsap's at that point right there. He makes the pass. And almost came up a little short, made Millsaps double down. Now watch how fast Hansen gets through these whoops. A long, tall body of Josh Hansen in the number two spot. Paul Carpenter's really starting to close in back and forth, stepping on, stepping off. But Josh Hansen looks to be the man to beat in second because he's moving his way forward. He sure has, and Millsaps going to try and hit you onto him. Nice four-way battle here. And again, I think all these guys smell blood with James Stewart not out there. They probably went to the starting gate thinking that he was going to be out there and thinking what they had to do to get second. And now all of a sudden, it's anybody's ball game. The arrows indicate these riders are in qualifying position. We take nine out of each of our 125 heat races. And oh, look at that. Danny Smith out in front of Josh Hansen. Now that's your Yamaha teammate. You're not going to do anything crazy, are you? Yeah, but those guys don't have a lot of history at this point. They might ride together, practice together, and train together. But beyond that, they both just want to win. Half 
half a second behind. Here comes Millsaps. Millsaps doubles up, and Davey Millsaps moves into second. Millsaps is looking for a win. Wow, I tell you what, that's what I mean when that kid looks like Travis Pastrana out there. No one has done that combination all day long on a 125. Millsaps waits till the heat race to uncork it, and now he's getting Oh! Millsaps goes over the bars. We've seen it happen in practice. That last little kicker caused him. He's walking off the track. He's not even going for his ball. That is the exact same thing that happened to James Stewart, only wasn't even going that fast when he went down. Millsaps out of this race. Another rookie mistake. Millsaps is shaken up. Hopefully, he will be able to regain. Let's take a look at it. It's the exact same thing that happened to James Bubba Stewart. He looks fine here, triples up, but watch this last kicker. Over the bars, he goes. Wow, that was unbelievable. I hope he's okay and he can come out and ride the LCQ. Benegay, Carpenter, Hanson, Millsats, and Smith. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, Supercross champion Ricky Carmichael gets to drive the big rig. No, I mean the really big rig. RC and Gravedigger. It sounds like an old-fashioned buddy flick. But in fact, it's the pairing of a 150-pound two-wheeled superstar and a four-ton four-wheeled legend. Well, it was awesome, I tell you. Uh, I'm definitely, I'm definitely a fan for sure. It's, uh, it's given me a new look to uh, monster truck driving and racing. It's, it's definitely. Uh, you got to be talented and have some skill. It was, uh, it's amazing. I can't even talk right now because I'm. You know, my adrenaline and everything is going. It's, uh, it's unreal. I got I got new respect for these guys, man. They are they're awesome. There's no way I could do what Pablo does, that's for sure. And I'd uh, just like to say thank you to him and Clear Channel and for taking good care of me and uh, giving me this opportunity and taking time out of their schedule. I know how busy they are because of all the racing we do, and it's uh, very polite of him and his wife to, uh, to do that. And, uh, you know, it's just been an experience of a lifetime. And, you know, I was down there that day, Robbie, watching Ricky ride around those trucks, and I know he can't wait to get back on track. He was never expecting that, but he had an absolute blast, and you know what? He was pretty good pretty quick. We're in Indianapolis, Indiana, 125cc heat race number two. We've already seen some action. It's the 59 of Danny Smith out of Idaho, the Boost Mobile Yamaha Troy in front of Josh Hansen, Paul Carpenter. Those three are pretty tight. A good gap between them and fourth spot. Yeah, they've opened it up now after Millsaps. I think the people behind Davey Millsaps have actually backed it down a notch because that was just an absolutely frightening crash. He's back on the track riding around, so he's not hurt. But we'll see if he can come back to the LCQ. You know, we didn't have a camera out there in practice today when James Stewart wrecked on those whoops. But I tell you, Robbie, I was standing right there next to Jamie Lowe when it happened, and it looked just like that. Paint the bike green, and it did look exactly like that. Paul Carpenter biting his time back there in the third spot. Josh Hansen's taking some multiple lines. It kind of opens the door for Carpenter. This is a great track for lines. I talk about it. The Clear Channel crew did a great job building this track. But we have talked about that one kicker throughout the day, and it has cost so many riders out here, but they're aware of it. They know it's there. Yeah, they do know it's there, and hopefully the, the riders will, will take that into account because, uh, you know, sometimes these riders are so aggressive, and these bikes are so good that it's really hard to build an obstacle and keep it down. Now, right here, Paul Carpenter trying to get along. Josh Hansen, and he does it. Now at the last corner, Hansen comes to the inside. He's not going to make it. Danny Smith gets the win. Carpenter second, and Hansen slides back to third. We mentioned that Paul Carpenter was biding his time on that Chevy Trucks Kawasaki in the number three spot. He has one better gate position. Now in fourth is Jeff Gibson, Adam Meningay, another West Coast rider that's riding the East Coast. This is his first East Coast race this year. Malolos, David Deglios Fosti is going to be uh, in the top nine, and Doug DeHaan taking the final transfer, but we've had two Smiths take the win. Yeah, I don't know if that's happened for one. Danny Smith also crashed today in practice. That same jump we were talking about, Robbie, he wasn't hurt as bad. Doc Bonner had to take a look at him, so it's good to see Danny get out there and match his teammate Kelly Smith with a, yim, a win for Yamaha Troy. Danny Smith on the boost. Yamaha takes the win. Paul Carpenter, Josh Hansen, your top three. Adam Meningay, again, top nine qualify for the final. Is Doug Gahan in that final transfer spot? William Brown, you're going to be in the LCQ. Now down to Jamie Little. Talk about fighting it out, you guys, and earning a win. 
Danny Smith had him all over you. Tell me about what was happening. I know Josh Hansen was on you. Davey Millsaps was right there and ended up going down. Yeah, you know, the track tonight, it's um, going to make for a real close racing, but uh, I just got to go out there and get that whole shot again. Be a little bit more intense for the main event because I felt like I had more speed, but, you know, I was a little cautious out there in the lead. Next time when I get in the lead, I'm going to ride as hard as I can tonight. You know, James isn't racing, and, uh, heck, you know, I just got to go for it. It's my chance to win one. I haven't won one. So you might see me out front tonight giving everything I got. I just got to thank uh, Boost Mobile, Yamaha, Troy, Dunlop Tires, Smith Goggles, Store Parts Unlimited, and Outline Stars. Give them a plug because uh, this season's kind of been up and down for me, but I still have a shot here in the championship to do something. So hopefully tonight and uh, Pontiac, I'll turn it around. The road to Las Vegas leads through the Pontiac Silverdome, and our next stop then is the home of the Dallas Cowboys, Texas Stadium, Rice Eccles in Salt Lake City, and then Las Vegas. You better get your tickets now. May 1st, I'm telling you, it is going to be a great one, as always. Now it's time for our Suzuki Question of the Week. Hi, I'm Cody, and I want to know who the last 125 Supercross champion was supposed to be. Hi, I'm James Coy, Brandon Jessman's mechanic at Team Suzuki. Brandon Jessman was Team Suzuki's last 125 champion in 2003. That's it for our Suzuki question of the week. Coming up, the LCQ, the last chance qualifier, and you don't want to go anywhere. Welcome back to the RCA Dome in Indianapolis, Indiana, for the THQ AMA Supercross Series. I'm Robbie Floyd with Davey Coombs, Jamie Little. Now, Davey Coombs, you're the best guy to explain this. What is pointing out in the 125cc class? Okay, the way it works is they keep standings all year long each season. And what they want to do is if a rider scores 100 points in three consecutive seasons, that means that the rider is pointed out. And when the series is over, the next year, he has to ride the 250 class. We heard about it recently because James Stewart, just pointed out, so did Travis Preston. When they started the 125 class back in 1985, the idea was to make it a stepping stone to the 250 class, not to have career guys in the 125 class. It's been a great addition, and so far, so good. It'll be nice to have James Stewart in the 250 class, finally. Well, our 125cc last chance qualifier starting grid, you talk about that pointing out one guy, Shea Bentley, 104. He's a West Coast champion of past, but he pointed out because he missed a whole season. He did not do three consecutive years. Exactly. You have to do three consecutive years. That's why Stefan Roncato was able to get back, because he did two years, then he moved to the 250. Man, this LCQ, we got a treat. Davey Millsaps is out there, and remember, he went down hard in that heat race, but up until that point, he might have been the fastest guy out there. Keep an eye on Millsaps. Remember, he's got to get in the top four, or his night is over. Tight first turn. Will everybody stay up? Yes, they do. Well, kind of. Tiger Lacey gets the whole shot, and Millsaps is back in about 10th. He's got his work cut out for him. Looks like number 156, William Browning, is in second. And then Ryan Mills is third. Right now, Millsaps is about 10th. He's got a way to go. 660 in the number four spot. Trying to qualify Robbie Smith out of Edmond, Oklahoma. Only four make it into the final. Where is Davey Millsaps? He has got to close in. This is a very short race. Only four laps. Tiger Lacey with a great start right there. See him on the Honda. Ryan Mills coming up behind him. You count your way back into seventh before you see Millsaps right there, 188. He's trying to get around Shane Lusk. That's the little brother, little brother I should say, of Ezra Lusk. Easy for you to say. Yeah, exactly. And you see Shane move up the spot. Now, right now, they are fifth and sixth. They got to pass four guys, and they got a ways to go to catch him. Ryan Mills moves into the number two position, number 44. He's closing in fast. Davey Millsaps still out of the top four. Actually, the first four are tucked in there pretty tightly. Yeah, the, what I meant to say is they've got to get up to fourth, not past fourth. And right there, you see Davey Millsaps unable to jump that triple. And you know what? The clock is ticking. Exactly. He's got about two and a half laps to go. He's got to pass two guys. You know what's funny is Brock Kepler finished second in Atlanta and then went to Daytona, made a mistake in his heat race, didn't even qualify, so it's Millsaps who got second. Now, the shoe is on the other foot, and Davey Millsaps is in jeopardy of not qualifying after having such a good finish. Millsap sits in ninth spot in the 125 East Coast points, but you know what? Everybody is chasing Tiger Lacey right now. Tiger Lacey, the 221 Honda out of Wolf Creek, Oregon on the Motorsports Outlet Honda MSR ride is putting the wood to him. Ryan Mills in second spot on the Factory Connection Honda. Third, Browning, Smith, and fourth, and no, O'Town goes fourth spot. Smith goes down, and just like that, Shane Lusk went down, Smith went down, Davey Millsaps 
is suddenly moved into fourth place. Talk about looking a gift towards the gift towards in the mouth. He got two gifts that time, and he goes from sixth to fourth. And right now, all he's got to do is stay up. He'll be the last man on the starting gate, but at least he'll be out there. Talk about flat out handed to you. Yeah, you had to put yourself in that sixth position, but uh, literally, it was a, a battle of attrition. Everybody just folding around him like a deck of cards. Yeah, Davey Millsaps is not a sixth place guy. They don't pay him to finish sixth in LCQ, so uh, yeah, he'll take that now. You see Ryan Mills, the factory connection Honda, starting to sneak up there a little closer to Tiger Lacey. How important is the difference, that one gate spot right here? Should Mills probably pay attention and say, you know what, I'm going to stay where I'm at because I will get in the final. Tiger Lacey, not the calmest, straightforwardest rider in the world. Yeah, right now you're just thinking about qualifying. You know, like I said, it's always nice to get on the podium, but at this point, man, you don't want to risk it. But you see Mills, he's not letting off, coming up toward the outside. Now it's going to come down to this rhythm section, and Mills gets by him right there. He tripled out, and he took the smooth, safe route, but it was good enough to pass to the lead. So Ryan Mills is going to take the win. And then you got Lacey. Go back a little bit to Browning. And here he comes, Davey Millsaps, the factory Suzuki rider. Whew. Barely, barely made it. Oh, the heart is pounding to look at him. I mean, he's a little dejected with himself. I mean, this is the future for Suzuki in their minds. But Ryan Mills, the winner of the 125cc last chance qualifier, makes that last lap pass as a four-lap. I mean, just do all or nothing. Four laps. You've got to do it now or you're not going to be in the big show tonight. That's some tough racing out there. Oh, the, the eyes of a champion right there. Will we get the first win for Ryan Wills? We saw his problems at Atlanta. As we take a look at the Thor 125cc LCQ results, it's Ryan Mills, Tiger Lacey, William Browning in third, and Davey Millsaps qualifies to the final. Nathan Skaggs, he took fifth, and he gets that asterisk medic card. Will the field is set for the 125cc main event? Will it be Danny Smith or this guy, Kelly Smith, with a win? Stick with us. Welcome back to beautiful Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm Jamie Little, joined by Davey Coombs and Robbie Floyd. Right now we're getting ready for the 125 main event, but before we do that, let's check out our Nissan Rider of the Week, Davey Millsap. <laughs> I'm Davey Melkaps, I ride for Team Suzuki, number 188. I just turned 16, I just turned pro. It's a lot different than amateur races. I just, when I was racing amateur, I, you know, I won pretty much a lot of races. And then you move into the pros and you don't do so well, the first couple races. And it's kind of a bummer, you know, you're expecting to go in there and do pretty good. But, you know, the fans are great, the people are, are backing up 100% in the pro ranks, so it's all good. The pressure coming into the first race on the factory team was, you know, enormous. I had all the cameras in my face because I was supposed to be, like, the big thing my first race. And, you know, I, I kind of, I really did choke my first race, and uh, pressure, pressure is worn off of me. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. When I'm not racing, I like to hang out with my buddies and, you know, go to the mall, the movies, whatever normal kids do. I live a normal life, too. And there's our Nissan Rider of the Week, Davey Millsaps. You and I have talked about it during break. There's only been one guy that we can think of that has qualified last of the last chance qualifier and won a main event. Who's that? It was Nathan Ramsey. And <laughs> I tell you, if anyone's going to come from the very back of the pack like that, it might be Davey Millsaps. He has had a crazy career to this point, that's for sure. He's young, he's a rookie, he's fearless. He's also bounced off the track a few times. Suzuki brings us our main event starting grid. This Danny Smith, Kelly Smith in second is our top qualifier. So if you last name Smith, you were fast tonight so far. Also keep an eye on Carpenter. A little further down, Brett Metcalf on the KTM. Didn't ride his absolute best Tiger Lacey. Watch out for him. And again, our very last place guy on the grid, Davey Millsaps. 22 riders, 15 laps. Who's going to get that Butterfinger hole shot? There's Steve Boniface. He is our onboard camera. He looked fast tonight, getting us some great shots. I tell you, you got to get a good start here. As we've seen all night long, it's a really short start. This is the first time we've had 22 guys trying to squeeze in this tight left-hander here in the RCA Dome. And again, with James Stewart sitting out with that concussion, any one of these 22 guys is going to have a chance to ride into the record book. 
This is what it's like to start a 125 main event. Keep an eye on Steve Boniface. You're looking at the starting gate, and there he goes. The gate's dropped, and it looks like a Yamaha out in front. Josh Hansen in front of Paul Carpenter. And there's our man Boniface back in about eighth spot, it looks like. And laying back in the first turn was Davey Millsaps. He did not make it cleanly out of the... Josh Hansen, your leader, ahead of Paul Carpenter as they go over the triple the first time. Steve Lampson jumps his way into third. A nice move right there by Lampson. You see Carpenter get a little far off the side of the track. Hansen trying to make a break already. He's your leader, then Carpenter, then Lampson. If you're wondering about Brock Hepler, like Millsaps, he went down on that start. So the two Suzuki teenagers, the absolute rookies, Hepler and Millsaps, are way in the back of the pack. The Butterfinger Whole Shot Award. Butterfinger brings us up that Whole Shot Award, and let's see who takes it. A very short start straight, but that bend around the left and the chalk line. Who's going to get it? It was Josh Hansen, just like his father, Donnie Whole Shot Hansen. <laughs> He's got that great technique, gets that start, and there he goes. The Colorado boy is out in front on the start, and he's still out in front right now, being chased by Paul Carpenter. Davey Millsaps having problems getting a bike started again. He goes down. That's the second time he went down on the first lap. You see Turbo Reef also off to the side there. Now here, Millsaps is going to jump back into the race. He is right in front of the leader. Davey Millsaps has actually left. But watch, Hansen moving up. And hey, I'm really impressed by Paul Carpenter. What good staying power he's shown so far. I almost said Hepler goes down. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but he almost did the face auger on the big triple. And Davey, I was scared for him there for a moment. So the two Suzuki hopefuls are not doing well tonight. It's a Yamaha out in front of Josh Hansen. Paul Carpenter is just on him, though. He wants to win. Somebody's got to win this, though. Well, after St. Louis last week, Paul Carpenter got his first podium ever. He finished third, but he really felt mad at himself. I talked to him a couple times this week, and he said that he should have beat this guy right here, Josh Hansen. He got a little too nervous, a little too upset. You can see he's only 0.631 behind him on our interval clock. The Carpenter said he should have gone better, but he had never been in that position before. As a professional racer, Paul Carpenter had never been on the podium in a major race. You see him getting the board right there. They're telling him it's your race. Josh Hansen is the leader, but Paul Carpenter is second. You have to go a long way back to our third-place rider, Steve Lampson. As these two riders here are starting to gap the field every now and then, you get a glimpse of Davey Millsaps, and again, he is about to be lapped. A great battle rages on for a second spot. I wonder if Paul Carper is biding his time. Well, what did Jamie Little, you got something for us? I was talking to Paul Carpenter before this race, and he said, you know, right when Bubba said he's not going to race, Mark Johnson, the team manager, looked at he and Michael Byrne and said, all right, guys, the pressure's on you. you got to step it up tonight. Trying to step it up for Kawasaki. You have a member down. you got to pick up the pace, and it could happen. He looks fast, but is he waiting? I don't know. I don't know. You know what? Paul Carpenter is one of the most unlikeliest factory riders that I think is out there. He got a great gig with Kawasaki developing that KXF for him, but, uh, you know, he was hurt for a long time, and now he's just starting to realize his potential. And there you see Danny Smith, our fourth-place rider, Lampson back to fifth, and then you have 79, Doug DeHaan, a big pack of riders right there, our helmet cam. Probably get a good shot from him because Steve Boniface is back there behind that whole train. And again, Hepler way in the back trying to work his way up. Like Millsaps, he went down twice. You're looking at former 125 motocross national champion Steve Lampson trying to hold off all these young bucks and, and doing a good job in fourth spot. His last lap was 49-23. He's definitely got to turn it up. That is not going to be enough to win here today, but Lamy looking pretty good in the top five. He's getting some pressure from Doug DeHaan. It's also a very good ride for DeHaan. We haven't seen him up there very often. Doug DeHaan out of Canada, one of the Canadian motocross stars, having a pretty good presence here in the U.S. Yeah, Lampson right now doing his best to hold off this whole freight train. And you see Kelly Smith sneaking up, and then Brett Metcalf goes on the inside, and Metcalf looks like he's going to get around Kelly Smith as they come through the whoops. Again, that's the spot right there where we lost James Stewart earlier in the day. Look at that battle. Oh, and there, Metcalf takes a look behind him. Kevin Johnson in the five spot just behind Steve Lampson, and it does look like he's holding up a little bit, but Steve Lampson on the hang HangtownMX.com machine is just holding up the field. There's Steve Boniface with our onboard camera. Boniface back in eighth. 
The start was everything, and as we saw in the start, Boniface just didn't get out of there. How great would it have been if he'd have won the Butterfinger whole shot or whatever <laughs> helmet can? We could sponsor him next week, too. Steve Lampson doing a good job. I mean, he's in the top five. He's in fourth spot behind the number 59 of Danny Smith. But the battle for the lead is on, and I mean, it is really on. Paul Carpenter wants some of Josh Hansen right now. Hansen made a mistake on that big triple jump, as I was talking about earlier. If you mess up going into one of these sections, you have to be careful. Now, here comes Carpenter on the outside, and he just gets on the gas quicker. Hansen takes him up high. Now they come out the rhythm section. That's what happened last time. Carpenter let Hansen get away with that. I don't think it's going to happen tonight, Robbie. And it's tough with those bowl turns. When he ran him so high, those bowl turns are steep. It's hard to show it on television, but they're very steep, and a lot of times that rider on top falls down because of gravity. Exactly. As Jamie told us, Paul Carpenter got a little extra pressure, a little extra motivation with James Stewart not being out there. And last week, as we heard Carpenter say, he really credits James and his dad for helping him with his motivation. And I tell you, he is flying out there. He's making the Stewart proud. He's making the Kawasaki people proud. But can he catch Josh Hansen? We're halfway through this 125cc main event, and Josh Hansen is out in front. Josh Hansen is out in front of the 125cc main event here in Indianapolis, and Paul Carpenter was so close a second ago, but a little bit of bobble put some separation between he and Hansen. He came out of the corner, the bank corner, where Hansen held him off the lap before, and he just fumbled, and it messed him up for the whole section that followed, and now Hansen's got a little bit of breathing room. You see him turning in lap times about 47 and a half. He's got some breathing room, but we'll see if Carpenter can come back even more motivated. He's turning 47-second lap times. I mean, he is quick out there, Josh Hansen, looking for his first ever win. His father, as we've mentioned, Donnie Holshot Hansen, and it was his son who got the Butterfinger Holshot World War today. It was right here in the same corner where Carpenter messed up the lap before. It was just it was just a small bobble, and some of the big crashes we've seen today, you don't expect something like that to have such an effect, but, man, super crash. It's all a matter of seconds and inches and fractions. And that's all it took for Hansen to get a little gap. Now, can Carpenter catch back up? Check it out right here. He comes out high. He was trying to set up a pass. And Carpenter goes just a little too far high on the outside. He was going to try and square it up. And right here, he slides out. He got on the gas too quick. Look at that. Almost went down. Almost gets his foot caught in the back wheel. He saved it, but he lost his shot at Hanson. Now he's got to make it back up. Six laps remain in this 125cc main event. You see the lap times. He turned to 46.56 back in lap number five, but 47.42 is pretty good this late on. But Josh Hansen looks like he is set to win his first 125 main event. So far, so good for Lil Hanny and the Yamaha Troy team. They have been shut out all year long. The only winners we've seen is Tedesco and Ramsey out on the West Coast and James Bubba Stewart here in the East. No Yamahas among those. So Hanson could get Bill Alderton and Jeff Iron Montgomery their first win of 2004. He just needs to hold on right now. Back at third spot, Danny Smith. Fourth spot is still, I believe, Steve Lampson, Metcalf is in there as well, followed by Steve Boniface with our helmet cam. So Boniface is actually working his way up through the field. As we look back, there's our leader, Hanson. There's Carpenter in second. Yeah, Smith they is are, still to come through in third. They are way out front. Right here he comes in the blue. That's Danny Smith, number 59. That's third spot right yeah. there. Three laps to go. I don't think he's going to catch second. You know. But he wants the podium nonetheless. Oh, sure he does. Danny's had a tough year, like he said, after he won that heat race. So it's, he probably built his confidence up a little bit, but he just didn't get the start he needed. As the race progresses, ladies and gentlemen, we have a 15-lap race. Josh Hansen is going to come into more and more lap traffic. That is going to be a determining factor. And Paul Carpenter is starting to close in. He Here is he tightening the screws. Here he comes again. He gets through those whoops so fast. And right there, you can see Carpenter triple out of that rhythm section. And look, they're starting to share our screen together. He's got three laps to go. Can Carpenter catch him? You know, when Bubba was out, we thought we wouldn't see, you know, a spectacular race, but instead we're going to see a close race. That's something we haven't seen here in the East Region all year long. 
It's going to be a really close race because I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that Paul Carpenter wants this win in a bad way. That Chevy truck's Kawasaki has looked fast all night, made one bubble that he hopes does not cost him, but he's closing it. I mean, he's going ludicrous speed right now. he goes now. especially fast right here through these whoops. Watch this. He swings down the outside, and right toward the end, he gets going. Although that time, i got to say, Hanson got through real quick. He's got a second oh. 1.487 lead. Lost his rhythm. That rhythm section killed him for the second time. Carpenter fumbled one more time. And again, that time, that might have been fatal to his hopes of winning this race because he's running out of time. There's just about less than two laps to go now. That might have been it for Carpenter. Peyton Manning is king in this place when it comes to football, but Josh Hansen is looking to be king in the 125 East Coast race here tonight on the Yamaha of Troy. YZ, I mean, he is on fire, got that Butterfinger whole shot award, and is trying to check out, but Paul Carpenter is not letting him. This is this is going to be Josh Hansen's first win. Like we said, someone's going to get in the record books. His father is already there as the 1982 250cc Supercross champion. I don't think we've had a father-son win Supercross races. And a pretty special night for Donnie Hansen, the Donnie Hansen Motocross Academy. One lap to go for Josh Hansen. Can he just keep it up and keep going? We're on the white flag lap, and this is a 125 West Coast rider riding in the 125 East. He currently sits 17th in points, had a horrible year on the West Coast. As soon as he made the East Coast turn, he has been on fire. I'll bet, I'll bet there's a lot of guys out in California thinking, where was? Hansen in January because he was not going even close to this fast. Now he's got just about a half a lap to go, a couple lap drivers in front of him. You know, he's a smart kid. He just needs to be patient. And I have the feeling we'll see a pretty big whip coming down through the rhythm section. He clears the triple. You see his mechanic giving him the right on sign. Here he comes down the straightaway and Josh Hansen is in the record book. Oh man, did you see that fist bump? I mean, we are talking smiles of underneath that helmet I don't see I'm, I don't think I've seen anybody that happy in quite a while winning a 125 race well when Bubba wins them every weekend though Bubba's breaking come on show me a dance show, yeah. me, show me a Bubba dance I don't think this kid's gonna dance I think he just wants to hug someone good job for Lil Hanny there you see Carpenter stand right on I think Carpenter knows he made a couple mistakes it might have been his night but instead Josh Hansen of the Yamaha Troy team gets in the record book Josh Hansen takes the win, Paul Carpenter, and it is Mr. Smith taking the final podium spot. Supercross on ESPN2 has been brought to you by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, personal watercraft, and scooters by THQ's MX Unleashed coming February 2004 for PlayStation 2 and Xbox and by Suzuki, maker of performance driven motorcycles, scooters and all-terrain vehicles. Welcome back to Indianapolis. The 125cc main event is in the books and what a great race as we take a look at our Honda 125cc Eastern Region results. Josh Hansen takes his first win, professional win, in the Supercross series but what a race! It's been 22 years since the name Hanson graced the top of the AMA results like that. So congratulations to a great racing family. I'm not sure if Danny's here in the grandstands. Rather, Donnie's here in the grandstands, but good ride for his son. Well, taking third spot tonight, a very happy man nonetheless. It was Danny Smith on the podium. That's right, Danny. I think you had one of the most smoothest rides of the night. Nobody really in front of you, nobody really in back of you. Were you just riding your own race, or were you really trying to catch those guys? Well, you know, I was kind of uncertain. I'd had a change in my motor after the heat race. And uh, it was some settings I wasn't really familiar with because I uh, had a head gasket leaking. And, and, uh, but uh, my mechanic in Yamaha, man, they just switched that thing out, and I had faith in them. And I just went out there, and it was a little different, but I just said, oh, let's ride smooth out here. Didn't get the start, but I made some really trick passes in the first couple laps, and uh, just happy for uh, Yamaha and myself to finally get on the podium. And uh, it's a good night for our team, Josh Juan, and I got third and moving up in points. Totally unaware of the motor switch of Danny Smith. Thanks a lot, Jamie, on that one. But one guy who had no problems except for one straightaway, one rhythm section that didn't go his way is Paul Carpenter. He takes second, and he's with Jamie. 
Well, Robbie, last weekend it was third. This week it's second. But, Paul, you don't seem too thrilled. I know things didn't go exactly your way. Do you think you could have gotten him if there were a couple more laps? Yeah, absolutely. I felt that I was stronger than him. And, you know, I made a bunch of rookie mistakes. So, uh, rookie season, first couple Supercrosses. <laughs> Rode like a rookie, you know. But, um, you know, I'm happy to be here. And I guess I learn more and more every weekend. And just... Um, I'm happy for the team and happy for myself, but I'm a little disappointed for James because uh, James Stewart, because I know he wanted me to win, and uh, I tried my heart out, but just couldn't get it done. Paul Carpenter, the representative for Chevy Trucks Kawasaki. We will see with that East-West shootout in the 125s. The road to Las Vegas, it leads to there May 1st. James Stewart, still your points leader in the AMA Supercross Series, brought to you by THQ. Brock Kepler holds on to second. He didn't have a very good finish, but you see Smith and Carpenter moving up. They've got that race in Pontiac to really close it down, so uh, could be a good battle for second. Paul Carpenter a little bit hard on himself, but I can promise you there's one guy with a smile a mile wide, and that's him right there, Josh Hansen. So much excitement going on down here for Josh Hansen. Josh, huge hole shot. You got out in front, never looked back. But the question I have to ask you, what in the world happened on the West Coast? Why couldn't you have pulled this there? You know, I had a broken hand all throughout the West Coast, but, I mean, it's coming. I, I mean, I want to give Tedesco a room for his money. You know, he's a great rider, and uh, hopefully I have something for him on the West. And, uh, and I just can't thank the Lord up above enough, you know, really standing behind me. Uh, my whole team, Yamaha, Boost Mobile, Thor, my, my uh, trainer, John, my parents, my mom, dad, Becky, Donnie, my little sister, Caitlin. I, man, it's really a dream come true. You know, I've been working at this for a long time. I'm glad to follow in my dad's footsteps. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, the next race. Thanks a lot, Jamie. Be sure to join us next week at Pontiac, Michigan for more THQ AMA Supercross Series. It was the new whole shot Hanson, Josh Hanson, taking the win here in Indy. For Davey Coombs and Jamie Little, I'm Robbie Floyd. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com.